If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Once I have the site open, I can start adding equipment to it. So I'm going to go over here to my catalog pane that we've gone through, and I'm going to choose a couple of core switches for this. This site it needs, uh, needs a new IDF, and I'm going to start that out by a couple of 7650s uh, for routing and core, and then I'm going to put some 7150 access switches in there as well. Now notice when I'm pulling these out, I can just drag and drop them out into the site. It's actually going to select the base model for whatever family that I'm in. So I'm actually not planning on using these 7150C08Ps, but they're really placeholders right now. And after I can go in here, if you notice over here on the properties that we've gone over before, what it's doing is it's just going to select the base switch in that family. And then I can go down and I can uh, choose a different one if I'd like. So for example, for these, I'm going to be choosing uh, a different model, a little bit more upgraded. It's got some uh, additional features. And notice in the actual site itself, these switches are changing the icon that represents them as well as the name that they have here. I can just as easily, if I wanted to add another switch here, I can copy and paste. If I can control C, control V, and it's gonna bring that switch out. And then I can put it here if I'd like. And like we went over before, each one of these switches, when I highlight it, the properties pane is gonna to change to represent that particular switch. For example, these 7650s that I brought out, I have some different models and some different pre-configured bundles um, that I have available to me. In this case, I like these pre-configured bundles down here because they have some redundant power supplies. These are nice to build a network with, as well as any licenses that I would need. Now this side, I am going to be needing the Layer 3 Premium license. Uh, I don't need MaxSec right now. And then I have different options as far as the slots. Uh, these, if I need, let's say, some more SFP Plus modules, or actually in this case, I want to put this two-port QSFP module in. I could do the same thing on this other switch. It's going to remember which tab I'm on. It's trying to make things easy for me. Notice, because I chose a bundle, this bundle actually already has these fan and power options already set up. Um, if I chose a bundle that, that didn't have those, or if I didn't choose a bundle and just chose a base model, I would need to select these. But I can continue to go down here. In fact, actually for this site, I actually would like to add um, a smart zone to manage these switches and maybe some of the APs that I'm going to be adding later. Much like the switches, when I add the smart zone, it's going to add the base model. And then I can look in here at the different models that are available and see if there's uh, another one that would actually do the trick. I am going to choose the S124 because I do want those SFP Plus ports available for this one. And notice as I bounce around between these different switches, I do have different options available, but I can kind of pick up wherever I left off depending on where I'm working at the time. In the same way that I can add equipment very easily, I can also delete it very easily. I can either highlight and click the delete key on my, on my keyboard, or I can right click and hit delete right here. I can also use these options up on the, uh, the ribbon up here. Now just again, I've added these switches by clicking and dragging them out. I could also use the advisor if I'd like to. Um, I can click on the, let's say, the wireless selector because I want to add some access points to my bill of materials here. And I really need some wall plate APs uh, because this is going to be an MDU site. And I can click on the H510, add it. It's going to ask me if it would like to close. So yeah, I'm okay with it closing. And again, if I need multiple of these, I can either... I can just cut and paste different ones on there, and then I can move them out uh, to wherever I'd like to have them. 
Now I promised you earlier that I would show you how to deal with these uh, these red um, error messages um, that, in regards to power. So I have a couple of options. What I can do is I can either right click on the access point and click connect, which is going to allow me to connect it to one of the switches and, and, and get rid of that, or actually have the connection tool up here on the bar as well, where I can actually just drag and drop a connection. This is going to bring up the select ports uh, submenu. And you notice here on the left, I have the access point that I'm trying to connect, and the, over here on the right is the switch that I'm connecting it to. So this is all of the ports that are available on that particular access point. Here's the uplink, which is the one that I'm worried about right now. I want to uplink this. And how it, it's asking me over here how I'm going to be getting my power. So I'm going to click and select the uplink, and I'm going to connect that to LAN number one of this ICX7150. Down here, it's going to quiz me a little bit on the cable length um, and the type of cable that I'm going to be using just to make sure that I'm within spec and it's going to be actually delivering enough power. If I click the connect button and then I click close, as you notice, that has now been connected to that switch. Of course, you're, th you're thinking right now, why didn't the message go away? Well, this switch actually doesn't provide any power. And so this is, again, I'm highlighting a bit the, the different um, validation that you can get from the IRIS tool. This has happened to partners before where somebody is in a hurry and they choose a switch and they forget that they ch didn't choose one that actually provides power. So I've connected it and it hasn't gone away. So now this is highlighting to me that I have an issue that I need to deal with here. So I'm going to click on this switch and I'm actually going to go into the... Um, the properties here and I'm actually going to find, oh, that's right, I actually need the 24P because the P signifies power. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to change that to a PoE switch and while I'm at it, I'm actually going to change the other one to a PoE switch as well. So now when I come in here, I can highlight this connection and delete and I can start that process again using the connection tool. I'm going to connect it to this switch. I'm going to select the uplink and I'm going to select one of the connections over here and click connect and close. And now you notice that this AP is now very happy because it's actually being supplied power from a power over ethernet switch. So now I'm going to repeat that process for the additional APs that I have going to click up again here on the ribbon at the connector tool. I'm going to just drag and drop to the switch that I want to connect to. I want to select the uplink of this H510 and connect it to the LAN port here. If I just click LAN and I don't drill into the actual specific port, it'll just choose the next one that's available. Or I can actually click on the particular port that I want to use depending on how detail-oriented I want to be. Click connect. You notice that now that AP it's no longer giving me a message that it requires power. And I can do the same thing to these other two APs, and I'm going to connect them to this top switch here. Again, selecting the uplink and one of the LAN ports. Connect. And finally, this last AP here. I'm going to do the same process. And now I don't have any of those messages over here telling me that these APs don't have power. Mm -hmm.